Hey, I'm pleasant to day, everybody. This is Sports Time News. I'm Joe Brook, and this is going to be a quick video on the Chicago Blackhawks as we look at their offseason and some things that could happen there as we have some planes flying outside. But this is going to be on the top prospects, as I did with other videos like on the Boston Bruins, the Buffalo Sabres, and the other teams up to this point in the alphabetical order. But this one is going to be on the Blackhawks as we look at some guys like Taylor Radishes of the world, the Kubaliks, the Dylan Stroms, the young guys that could be part of the building the future of this team to get them back to the promised land. But let's get into it. Last year, Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze went healthy uh, for Taze coming back. Started getting going into the end of the year. Started getting his legs back. I know he's 34 years of age. He's a UFA after 2023, so maybe you can get something for him. Um, also, a UFA after 2023 is Patrick Kane. Both get paid 10-5. So in a time frame in the NHL where a lot of teams minus like a select very few handful or a bit more are right on the cap which is going to be tough but we'll see if they'll be able to move them and if you move them you're obviously going to get many plentiful assets back or at least one very plentiful asset back and that's going to really help to build the um blackhawks going forward where i think most people are part of the camp of and before we go on, please continue to subscribe down below to keep the channel growing as well we really hope that you guys love and appreciate the content this far we really love and appreciate your support but before um we go further on the overall team, I would say I'm in the lesser camp, which is I think this team could be quicker if they're smart, which is building around to bring Kitty's 24. And then a smart thing Jason Matisse said that I never considered is he thinks of everything kind of in duos, where obviously you think of, like, say, Alex Vlasic, the big kid that develops really well with Jones. Maybe that becomes a good duo. Uh, like, do you think of defensemen in duo? But but you also can think of forward core, like uh, Raddick and... Um, uh, Doc seemed to start developing good chemistry, so you can kind of work there. But it seemed like the Brinkett and Strom started developing good chemistry. Obviously, Strom's an RFA, but an RFA, you still have control on him. I'm in the camp of they should find a way to keep him, too, because he's just entering his prime years, and he's developing chemistry with Cat. Why trade Cat when you can build around him? And why trade Dylan Strom when he seems to be getting chemistry with a guy like that? Kirishev started off pretty good, kind of had a little bit of bumps in the road, but showed some um, moments of still flashiness this year and I think he's a guy that's only 22 going on 23 so he has a lot of time to develop same with Kirby Doc and same with Radish all of those guys Radish is more entering his prime years though he's 24 but the other two are very young not even in their prime full peak prime entering the prime years yet in their mid-20s Kachuk also was pretty solid in a fourth line role playing about 60 games and then Lafferty is just kind of a journeyman Bjorkstrom we're gonna be able to see more D didn't really show much yet but has shown some moments so we'll be able to see what he's able to become Vlasic did play good in 15 games it's too small of a sample size to judge him uh Jake McCabe is obviously a solid defenseman Connor Murphy uh he, he did have an off year though as did Connor Murphy but both likely will have bounce back years and only get paid in the four million so they have good contracts and then Riley Stillman as a right hand, or as a left-hander excuse me has a very good contract only at one three five until 2024 so that Bring some guys getting at good contracts. Arvid Soderblom played very well in the minors. Not so good in his first three NHL games, but he still has time to grow at only a 22-year-old kid. They do got to figure out the goaltending there, obviously. But it seems like they're moving in the right direction. We'll see if they decide to keep Kevin Lankin in. He's a UFA. He might even end up going to a team like Edmonton where he'll get a better chance to start and maybe start. <clears throat> they don't obviously have the tightest defense, but start thriving there. Maybe he is one of those guys. Like he first came up when he faced a lot of shots, he did do really well. Then the league figured him out. If he figures it out again, if he's able to kind of reverse figure them out, I should say maybe he is one of those guys that thrives off of more shots. But we'll have to see over time. Delea is probably a third string pickup for somebody that's going to play in the minors. It could even be for the Flyers, um, the team that I, the, the team that I first most root for, just because they kind of need that type of goaltender if they're going to go with a veteran and want to have Sandstrom or. Um, Obviously, the newly arrived Ivan Fedotov play as well, but we'll have to see there. But when it comes to this Blackhawks team, they have a lot of room that they need to grow into to become competitive again. But obviously, if you trade Kane and if you trade Taze and you're able to find a team that takes them, you're getting great assets back. So I think they're going to be in a good spot. I wouldn't trade to Brink it. I would build around him. And Strom, you're not going to... Not yeah, necessarily building around Dylan Strom, but he's a perfect piece of the puzzle that's in your core, I think, because he has good chemistry at the Brinkett, and there's some guys that just very much jive with each other. It seems like here in Philly, Morgan Frost is starting to find the guy that he could really jive with because him and Tibbet played 
in international play. So that's kind of a perfect example there where those two seem to be driving with each other. Why the heck would you uh, play around with that? If I'm the Blackhawks, I am signing a goaltender, though. Uh, I would probably go for more of a veteran, and I'm not saying like a Yori Halak veteran. I'm saying a veteran that maybe you can get for two or three years to a uh, play for you. I would, if they eat 50% and the Blackhawks are able to somehow move Kane and Taze, I would maybe even look, because I still think Bobrovsky's a very good goaltender. I just don't think he's elite anymore. But if this team's able to continue to build up their defense, which is kind of my closing point, um, in the minors, uh, they do have guys like Nolan Allen, who's going to continue to develop. Uh, he's only 19, so you got to give him a lot of time. Same with Del Mastro. They're both only 19, but they picked two good defensemen in last year's draft, and one good one in a Crevier in um, 2020. So, and Crevier is huge. The other two are 6'2", 6'4", and 6'8". And Crevier is the closest. He's 21 years of age. So imagine that force uh, coming at you um, as well with those guys. Where, of course, guys playing overseas. And then if you look at the guys that were also in their minor league camp, they have two guys that are pretty damn close. In uh, Connor Kelly, I don't know how much he's going to become at the NHL. He might become more of a 6'7", but at least you're going to have a guy that can play some minutes to you. Uh, maybe the meme can become someone that can play some minutes. And then Harding uh, was a guy that was a good pick at 91. And then you have Wyatt Kosser as well, who's pretty close to the NHL. Or not pretty close to the NHL. He's 19 years old, but seems like a guy that is moving and developing at a pretty quick age where the USA and the USA system keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger each year. And uh, Kaiser's kind of just a perfect example of that, as is uh, Dramine and uh, Kelly. So I think they kind of pick very good out of that camp and are going to keep backing off of that. Same with Jake Wise, who seems like he's going to be more of a bottom six player, but seems like he's pretty close to being ready for the NHL. And it was a third-round pick. So if you get a third-round pick, that becomes a good, simple Eddie bottom six player out of Ohio State that started at Boston U. Uh, I would say that's a very good pick. Uh, Landon Slagger seems like he's developing nicely. Uh, Sorella also is developing nicely. Um, so they have a lot of guys. Rolston's also developing nicely. That plays any position on the wing. So they have a lot of guys moving in the right directions. The biggest guy for them, Dominic Basse, might be up sooner since he's about to be 22, and he's probably going to potentially get a look like Delea did, and I think he's going to be better than a Delea. I don't know if he'll be as good as a Lankinen, though, because I think Lankinen might go on to be a very good 1B for somebody. But Camaso's their gem in net, obviously. And if he's able to continue to develop and be a guy that's up by 21, then that's huge for them. We'll have to see how that happens over time. But it seems like projection-wise, and it's all about probability and projection, right? But it seems like he's going to be a hell of a goaltender. But Dominic Passe, I would say, is probably the next guy up just because he's close to the age to give him a shot out of Colorado uh, College. The only problem is after doing pretty solid developing in the USA's program, he has struggled in college, but obviously the Blackhawks, even in, after some struggles, still gave Colin DeLay a shot. And I think that's something, even with all the bullshit that they did put themselves into, and they have to get past that, and rightfully so, the Blackhawks deserve all the criticism they get for that. As a team developing people, they seem to be good at giving guys chances that might have not had the greatest stats in the minors, but they kind of see something in them where it doesn't always work out, like with Colin DeLay. But with some, it does. Like, it feels like... Um, it'll still work out with a uh, guy like Akira Shev, and it'll work out with an Alec Vlasic, who you got at 43, who was not that deep in the draft, but it's still going to end up being a pretty damn good pick if he becomes a top four defenseman to get at 43. And then Riley Stillman, who they traded for, and it seems like have developed fairly well. Caleb Jones, who they were able to bring in as well, that played fairly well as well. So it seems like this team is obviously a couple years out, but I think it's a couple years out if they trend uh, in the right direction in terms of trading Kane, trading Taze, and getting assets for at least one of them. I don't necessarily see them being able to easily trade both, but if they can get assets for one of them, they're golden. And if they're able to bring in a goaltender that's a good veteran, they're pretty golden there too. Um, so I think this team is only about three years out from being competitive. I know I'm not in that five to seven year camp, but we'll have to see over time. Please subscribe down below or above on the easy use widget to keep trying to grow into the goal of 260 or more by the start of July. Stay safe out there, everybody. And please let us know what else you want to see in the future. Peace out, everybody.